Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we have seen about how we can compare satellite dataset with the observed dataset and determine how accurate that satellite dataset is. We have used Excel in the previous video to do the analysis and find out the results. So, as you know, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes although it is not quite uh, long but it's always better to make things simpler if you are dealing with large number of data sets with varying lengths so in this video we will see how to write a code to optimize the procedure which we have done in the previous video i have already made a code for the same and i'll be explaining you in detail each letter line of the code and say what uh, is happening in the code and why we used it. So let's directly get into it. So if you remember from the previous video, the first thing which we did is to find out the rainy days in the observation. So the same manner we will do the same thing in MATLAB to determine the value greater than 1. I have chosen greater than 1 mm per day as a rainy day. You might choose whatever the uh, range you want to take. But in this uh, video, I will be talking about rainy days which are greater than 1. So, the first line of the code says observed rainy days. What are the numbers of observed rainy days? So let's see what the statement says. I'm asking the model to find out the, sorry, firstly we'll see the data. I've already imported the observation, observed rainfall in the first column and satellite rainfall in the second column. So using that, I have written find data of all rows. So colon implies all rows comma first column so i'm asking the model to find out in the first column in all the rows in which row numbers are the values greater than one so this statement here will show you the values of the row numbers which are greater than one so if I run the code, we will see the observed numbers, 48th row. So let's cross check it, we will go to data, 48th row and we can see there is rainfall which is greater than 1. Just for confirmation, we will see the next one which is 56, it's greater than 1. So in this way, the first line of the code, what I have written, shows the number of row in which the data is greater than. So now when we know the row number, what we just need to do is extract the information in that row number for both observed data and the satellite data. Because we are taking the number of days Based upon the observed data, we will take the same day data of the satellite data. So, in order to extract the information from that, I have written three lines of codes. The first being because we have around 1141 rows of information, I am trying uh, to tell the model to go to each row and extract the value so for the model to go into each row it needs to run in a loop so i have written a for loop here i'm saying for i i is the name in which i'll be saving the information of the number of rows i is equal to one is to length of the data whichever name i have given in the previous line so what does this say 
it says 1 is to what is the length of the observed rainfall it's 1141 so for confirmation i'll run this you see it says 1141 so i'm asking the for loops to start from first row and go until the last row so what happens when it is going when i is equal to 1 then i am asking it to save rainy days observed in the first row first column what does it do where does it get the data from it goes to the data because this is where our uh, rainfall information is there whereas in this the number of row is there so it goes into the data and i ask the code to go again into the observed number and go to the row number so if you see observed number is where our uh, row numbers are there so what does this sentence do if i run this show you so because the i is not at given we got an error so for i is equal to one let me do one thing i is equal to one so when i say i is equal to one and i ask what does this sentence do you can see it gives a value of 48 what does that 48 mean it's the row number in which the rainfall in the observed data is greater than one so i'm asking this line to go into the 48th row of the first column so that line goes to 48th row and takes this value and saves it in the first row of the rainy observed data in the similar way for the same of the satellite data it goes to the 48th row and extracts the data which is zero and puts it in this value so when i run all these three lines at the same time you can see that in the rainy days 24.3962 which is the 48th row value and in the trmm the value being zero again which is the 48th row value in the data so in this way we have extracted the rainy days after we find out these rainy days the next step is to find out all the non rainy days we have already gotten the row numbers of whatever have rainy days in a similar fashion we can write find data lesser than one because we in this analysis i have put value greater than one as rainy days whatever is lesser than that is considered as non rainy days so in a similar way whatever lines we have written in the above the same four lines can be modified in such a way with a lesser lesser than symbol indicating non rainy days so once we run this line we will get all the row numbers and the data extracted for non rainy days now we have both rainy days and non rainy days so the next step is determining hit miss false alarm and correct negative so firstly what does hit represent again it represents that both satellite and observed data are showing rainy days now we have divided the data as rainy and non rainy so already we know that in rainy days all the observation points are rainy days right because we categorized it as greater than 1 
but we are not sure if all the satellite are greater than one or not. So the simplest procedure is to write a find command again to determine what are the values greater than one. So I have written the same thing here and I have written find whatever rainy days are there greater than one. So what does that give us? Similar to what we got earlier, it will give us all the row numbers which are greater than 1. So here 526 are the row numbers which are greater than 1. Because we are not uh, considering about how much quantity of rainfall is going here, I have directly written a command called length. Length gives you the value of number of rows in this data. So if I just do it evaluation here, you can see it's 526. So these are the total number of rainy days in the satellite data. Again, here we find the row numbers of each column and we saw that there are 522 days. To just represent the days, I have written length because it gives you the length of the matrix. So here, after running this, we will get a value of 526. So these are the total number of rainy days in the satellite data. Now we know that these are the rainy days. So what are the days in which there is no rain? when there is rain in the observed data. So the simple thing is to subtract the obtained 526 from 1141, right? So simply I have done this first part represents the length of the data which is 1141 and minusing this value. So it simply gives you a value when you subtract it with 526. 615 plus 526 is 1141. So what do we get from this? Why did we do this? Here these rainy days represent that observation data is already with rainy days and these 520 days, 26 days are the ones in which satellite is actually saying that there is rainfall. So both are saying that there are rainfalls. So it, this represents hits. So that is why we are naming this value as hit. And you get a value of hit here. Whereas all the observed data are saying that there is rainfall. But there are non rainy days in satellite data at the same day. So, what does that represent? It represents miss. That satellite is not able to predict that day or get capture the rainfall on that day. So, those are the number of misses. So, the next step is to find out false alarm and correct negative. Similar to the values which we have done for hit and miss. For false alarm, the observed data is saying that there is no rainfall. Then false alarm should say, the false alarm term should represent that there is rainfall in satellite. So if we find the number of days in which there is rainfall, when there is no rainfall in the observed data, it says false alarm. So to determine that, again I have used find command to find the values greater than 1 in the non-rainy days of satellite. So this statement finds you what are the number of days. If you see here, there are 422 days of non-rainy observation days in which Satellite is saying there is rain. So these are the days in which 
their satellite is showing false alarm so that is what this trmm non rainy days raining represent in the similar fashion to the above to find out the correct negative we just subtract the false alarms from the total number of non rainy days which gives you the days in which both satellite and observed data are seeing zero value or less than 1 in this case so that is what these four lines represent now that we got all the initial parameters the next thing is finding out pod fir and csi probability of detection false alarm ratio and critical success index in the previous video and the before that we have already discussed about the formula the same are represented here probability of detection is number of rainy days correctly represented by total number of rainy days so in this it's hit by hit plus miss into 100 to give it as a percentage in similar fashion false alarm ratio the formula is false alarm by total number of correct and wrong rainy days so that is hit plus false alarm whereas critical success index just considers all the rainy days and finds out how much can we depend on the model so when we run all the three we get the values of hits sorry probability of detection which is 46.099 when we compare it with the analysis we did in the previous video which is 46.099 correct false alarm ratio which is 44.5148 44.5148 44.5147 which is 8 critical success index is 33.65 33.65 so in this way we can optimize all the procedure uh, without uh, having any issue of copy pasting or any form of other error like human error while clicking any column in this uh, excel sheet so in this fashion these few lines of codes can automate the whole procedure and give you the results which you can further use it for your analysis so this is how you can write the code i hope you understood the concept behind writing this code and how the code works if you have any queries regarding it you can put your comments in the comment box and and i'll be answering them as soon as possible that is it for this video if you understood the concept and you like the content in this video give the video a like subscribe to the channel and share it with people whom do you think this information could be useful